so good. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. We got Chicken Police. It's got amazing reviews on Steam. It looks badass. I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. So good. <laughs> so what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. Nice. What could possibly go wrong? So cool. My office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. <laughs> but she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time, so I had to give her a chance. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real, the badge ain't. Chief Blood Boil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, <laughs> just in case. God, yes. Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident. I work Oops. for the police, and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Huh. Thank the Wild Ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on. Spill it. From the beginning. <sighs> it's so good, you guys. <laughs> oh, man. 
Notebook is the detective's best friend. You gather vital information. Yep, how does it work? Click on anything. Personal info. She runs errands for her employer, a sophisticated lady, but I don't think she's from a particularly wealthy or influential family. Okay. Chicken police, city, and the wild ones. Okay. Old article, got some good stuff. Okay. This is... Uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life. Before Molly left me and took our daughter. Oh, that sucks. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please, that's why I'm here. Oh, here we go, question. Focus on what you know about the suspect. Is he or she suspicious? Concentrate on that. Okay, very cool. He is suspicious. I am suspicious. Why are you suspicious? <laughs> Gather impressions from the suspect. Every impression adds a new question line. A new impression. Okay. Detective Meter is your best friend that shows how well the questioning is going. Keep it on the positive side, okay? Blah, blah, blah. I like that. Plus 100. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. It's my favorite kind. <laughs> Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Okay, impression side awful frightened. Definitely, oh man, we're on the minus, okay. Why'd you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? I feel like that's fine. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. Okay. She hasn't been leaving her home lately, only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages, and everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. I love when they can talk to the... Oh, that's so good. What do you want from me? Me? Oh, don't be silly, Deborah. I mean your employer. I was just talking to myself out loud. Well, Miss Katsenko thinks you're a great detective, and you're also reliable. That's why I came. Did she also give you the lockpick? Please, could you let this go? I'm really embarrassed. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm just teasing you. As soon as I saw you, you were forgiven. That's... that's very nice of you. All right. It has nothing to do with being nice, Deborah, but you're welcome. Hey, it moved up. That's what we like. Um, both of these are meh. Let's do the. Have you ever felt truly vulnerable? Honestly, very often, Mr. Featherland. Great, because that's exactly how I feel right now, Deborah. 
I'm sorry if it's too unpleasant for you, but we had no one else to turn to. You know, I get that a lot, and it never ends well. <laughs> Do you like happy endings? Not in books or movies, but in real life it would be nice for a change. But this is Clawville. Not many happy endings around here. I knew you were a romantic at heart. If what's between me and my whiskey could be called romance, <laughs> then yes. Maybe. A little. Tell me what you're so afraid of. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler. The Kingpin. Exactly. Oh. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Whew. All right, all right. Oh, you can retry it. Well, that's good. Because I'm sure I'm going to screw this up eventually. We'll continue. 90%? That's good. Hell. That's real good. Okay, we got ourselves some new people. Works for him and bam. The Kingpin. Uh, most known gangsters of Clawville. Holy bonkers. He's... He's done everything. Real estate, bank director, museum owner, distiller, smuggler, and information broker. Whew. Why don't you take it to the police? Just go. Please, take a look at this. Oh, well, sorry. Okay, let's see. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. Love Russians and like stories. I hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark oh. hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you alright? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. <laughs> Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko. But there's... One small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? Frick. 20 years experience, ma'am. <laughs> oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. Okay. Natasha must know my wife from somewhere. Perhaps she is very good informants. I must find out what the connection is. Okay. Lucy Hogwarts Rabbit, an old friend of mine. He is stuttering heavily when he talks. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Feather. I mean, 
Sonny. Don't mention it, Deborah. I had no other plans for today, except drink. But tell me, do you have a light? I'm sorry, I, I don't smoke. Ah, oh, thought so. Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No, no, no. Of course not, Sonny. Old friend, what's up? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Oop. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. <clears throat> you know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. Main scenes, limited scenes. Okay, close scenes. Okay, limited scenes, sure. It was New Year's Eve, and I was driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same. And the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? It's so cool. It's so good. Chapter one, detour. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Phyllis and Roy's. Two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look. Officious little shitheads but harmless. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny, what you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. 
Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop, just like you. Well, more than you. Ho oh. ho. Hey, you don't have to be so peckish, old bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? <laughs> Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages. And some drunk pigs in the basement. Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years. So cool. But that doesn't stop him from running into trouble. What the cluck did he do this time? Mort, you scabbiest beast. What the hell did you do? It's Morty to you, sonny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Did that ever bother you, Morty? Listen, sonny boy. Go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around <laughs> you? Uh, Jeffy is a good boy, Sonny. And he's good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? Still, Sonny, I have no one else. Do you understand that? Don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. <laughs> Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. I don't talk to that insane owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. Cool. Holy wild ones, look what the cat dragged ah. in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy as always. Eh, I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom. This son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you? Still dying? 
I'm still a cop for another 121 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion, thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not Whoa. him. It's not that simple, Bosco. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Mm. Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. Cool. One of Blood Boil's favorites. Mainly because he's a dog, of course. This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. Shit. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. I'm gonna do that. I know her well. Marty calls her Susie, and I have to say, this little she-devil pulled us out of many tough situations over the years. Big Her Majesty Bertha. Big Bertha. <laughs> or rather, Big Bertha too, because there was one before her. A sawed-off little broad, but we lost her in a swamp. Marty cried for a week. But once he saw this giant lady here, the balance of the universe was restored. I believe this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but Ooh. this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. Claudia. Tiny, dark, and angry, and hits you where it hurts the most. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. What, are you lost? This is the PD building, you know? Gotcha. Oh, shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on. Let's forget that. What's past is past. Yeah, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty. You shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. Frick, I keep yawning. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case. We'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. That's... Yeah. That's it? Uh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid, reckless shit? <laughs> Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so, tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? 
Ah, oh, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? Uh, all right, Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Hell yeah. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight, too, huh? If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. <laughs> uh, yeah, like last time? Oh. Those were uh, different times, Marty. With a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city, then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Uh, Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little. And it smells, too. What the furry hell is Blood Boy doing here? <laughs> Ah, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh, yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? W what <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> sort of. Oh, okay. All right, well, this is a great place to stop. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I would totally like to keep playing this and get some more videos in. And figure out what uh, figure out what happens. So, subscribe if you want to. It definitely helps out the channel, especially a small one like myself. Have a great night.